What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video back doing another 20 year rebuild. I've did this on the channel already. Uh, I don't know why I said I've did this. I've done this on the channel already with the Bengals. We did a 20 year rebuild. Actually, my most viewed video of all time. So that was uh, very, very cool. So I would like to think this video will also do quite well. Might be a lot of you guys watching more so than usual. So if you are new here, if you would hit that subscribe button, that would mean the absolute world to me. And let's go ahead and talk about this Raiders team, break down this roster, and really set my plan for the future. So this will probably be a very lengthy video again, if I had to guess. Yeah, my 20 year rebuild of the Bengals did quite well. Uh, 600,000 views in just under two months, or even more so than that. So you guys have been crazy with the sport. I very much appreciate it. And let's talk about this Raiders team. It's an interesting one. They just moved out to Las Vegas. This is their inaugural season. And I don't know if you guys have seen their stadium. Wow, looks incredible. Maybe the coolest looking stadium in, I don't want to say professional sports, but it's definitely right up there. It looks unbelievable. And when you look at this team, there are a lot of bright spots, a lot of guys that we can build upon, and a lot of guys who are really, really good already. So I'm super excited to do this. It's almost uh, like a retooling more than a rebuild because there are a lot of really good pieces in place already. If you look on the offensive line, Colton Miller has star development now. In previous times when we've rebuilt the uh, Raiders, he has not been the move. Normal development, a lower overall. But now, seems like he's finally blossoming into that player that the Raiders thought he could be. He's got star development, near an 80 overall, only 24 years old. This is our franchise cornerstone bookend left tackle in Colton Miller. Richie Incognito, the bully, super old. Probably have to uh, upgrade on him. But of course, this is a 20-year rebuild. These players are going to be in and out. It's like our QB of the future is not Derek Carr. Our running back of the future isn't really even necessarily Josh Jacobs at only 22 years old because in 20 years he will be out of the league for you know not on this team for like a decade so we you know have to constantly bring in more talent Rodney Hudson's a great center but he's old Gabe Jackson Trent Brown Darren Waller has been a monster so far I'll probably opt to play Fabian Moreau why did I say Fabian Moreau Foster Moreau over Jason Witten who is 100 years old and then Nelson Aguilar has actually looked good for the Raiders this year. I don't understand it, but he can actually catch the ball now, and he's a beast. Henry Ruggs is a monster. Zay Jones in there. Hunter Renfro, the 20th year senior. I'm sure he'll be on this team every single year from now in 2020 to 2040. Hunter Renfro probably will still be our slot receiver, if I had to guess. Brian Edwards is in there. I'd like to get him some playing time. Just I don't really want to play him over anyone above him at the moment Derek Carr probably will need to be upgraded in the near future Alec Ingold is a good fullback option and then Josh Jacobs is a monster Jalen Richard in there defensively things get a little bit worse there are questions at linebacker I know the team signed Nick Witkowski and Corey Littleton but they're not exactly the best options they traded for Raekwon McMillan the Dolphins gave him away I still don't really know why that happened Jonathan Abram former first round pick we should be able to develop him it was Eric Harris like we don't have a whole lot here he's 30 years old only a 74 overall not that good not that good Jeff Heath is here that's already a problem Max Crosby's tough to see because he's the same color as the silver background pretty much good lord Jonathan Akins, Maurice Hurst we got Malik Collins Cleveland Furl who I like quite a bit at Clemson he hasn't exactly uh, developed into being a monster just yet but I still have high hopes for him Lamarcus Joyner Trayvon Mullen is a good corner option I do want to play Damon Arnett over Nevin Lawson just because he is a first round pick and I like Isaiah Johnson quite a bit as well I would almost want to play him over Nevin Lawson as well it's an age thing at that point but again this team's going to change quite a bit over the next several years Tanner Muse in here as well I kind of forgot about him but it's a 20-year rebuild strap in grab the popcorn hopefully you don't fall asleep but also if you do make sure the ads play that's critical and uh let's go ahead and i suppose simulate to the mid-season mark two and five here at the mid-season mark not exactly ideal but you know this is the long haul we're not exactly forced and pressuring ourselves to make the playoffs immediately we're in it for the long haul okay nelson Aguilar is an impending free agent 
I'm not really pressed to re-sign him. Jonathan Hankins, kind of the same deal. If you guys didn't know, the age of regression in Madden is at 28. Uh, benchmark, I'm not really interested in re-signing players of that age, you know, unless they're pretty high into the 80s, I would say. There's not a whole lot here for me. I do probably want to re-sign Raekwon McMillan, but outside of that, I think I'm going to let a lot of these guys walk. All right, Raekwon McMillan is back for five years. He's only a 74 overall at outside linebacker. Not incredible. If he was a 74 overall at middle linebacker, that'd be a different story. That's a position that is weighted differently. So, you know, a 70 overall middle linebacker could be a 74 overall outside linebacker. It's just a position where the overall is stretched to give a bigger disparity in, like, overall. That's pretty much what it comes down to. But he was really the only player that I wanted. So I guess I will spend my coach XP. We'll probably do, I don't know, what, DB? Let's do DB training. And I will see you guys for the playoffs. Doesn't really look like we're going to be a part of them. But that's okay. This really starts at the offseason. So no pressure right now. Okay, not a playoff team. This team went 5-11. and 11. That is pretty brutal. We'll take a quick look at the stats. 13th best offense in terms of yards. Derek Carr was unexceptional to say the least under 4,000 yards under 30 touchdowns more than an interception per game not what you look for but Josh Jacobs dominated almost 1,400 yards 5.8 yards per carry 10 TDs really good year for him Nelson Aguilar is our best receiver Henry Ruggs had 92 catches but averaged less than nine yards per catch he's on his Jarvis Landry type B what are you doing I don't even know how that's possible that's so odd Defensively, Nick Wachowski, 100 tackles, 8 for loss, 2 sacks, 2 picks, really good year for him. 14 tackles from Maurice Hurst led the team. He also had 5.5 sacks, which also led the team. That's so bad. Interceptions, 2 for a handful of players, Littleton, Kwiatkowski, Joyner, and Mullen. Damon Arnett had the other one. Yearly awards, Tannehill wins MVP. No Raiders in there, not exactly a shock. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Ryan Tannehill. Defensive Player of the Year, Miles Garrett. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Justin Herbert. We had Henry Ruggs in there at 7. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Patrick Queen and Damon Arnett in there at 7 as well. But the first year really doesn't matter too much. Stuff really begins happening in the offseason. So that's where we're going to go. That's where we're going to start. We're going to see if we want to sign anybody in free agency. I'm not exactly super gung-ho to do so, but I might acquire a couple first-round picks. Make some noise that way in the draft. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to let everybody walk that I didn't resign already. So out of the off impending free agency, the only one that came back was Raekwon McMillan. But let's go ahead and jump into this offseason. Going to be a lot of older players in here. Also, it is noteworthy that today was the big midseason rating shape up or shake up for Madden. So a lot of these overalls are changed pretty significantly. Like, Marcus Williams is usually like an 88, 89 at this point. He's only an 84. I'm still interested, but I don't really think I'm going to sign anybody in here. Yeah, I'll probably just wait for the next offseason to uh, do a lot in free agency. We're going to focus on the draft. NFL draft time. We have a top five pick. The Lions are at number one. I don't know who we want to trade, but this would be the year to trade, guys, as we're going to have a lot of impending free agents, especially guys who are going to be super impactful. As Tim Chamberlain's here, looking like a Hall of Fame bust already. Where is the rest of his body? <laughs> that looks so ridiculous. But I'm going to go ahead and take a look at some of these guys. We need a lot of different positions. However, mainly on the defense side of the ball, I'm looking at cornerback, I'm looking at safety, linebacker, defensive end, and maybe even defensive tackle. I mean, we need pretty much every single position out here now that we don't have... Uh, Jonathan Hankins, even though I don't really want him. Corey Littleton has superstar development. That's pretty nice. I guess he went up to that. Don't know how. Kwiatkowski, I believe he went up to star. Raekwon McMillan also went up to star. Okay, so our linebacking core is actually kind of set. We need safety, corner maybe, and defensive tackle. I'm, I'm changing now that I've seen some of this. LaMarcus Joyner is regressing pretty quickly, so that sucks. But we'll, we'll, we'll probably play it based off best player available. We're building, you know, a dynasty. We don't need to build a win now team. This appears to be a pretty deep draft class with first round picks spread, you know, throughout the entire draft and not just up at the top uh, in terms of true talent. So we should be able to get some really, really good players. 
Could have a little uh, Henry Ruggs, Leon Ruggs storyline if we went with him. Although I probably won't. <laughs> Look at Mark Lucas out of OU here in the fourth round. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, I'm absolutely going to take him. That is happening without question. All right, let's see what's available at number five. Trey Roberts, early first round guy taken. He was a 76 overall. Baber, 78 overall. Washington football team takes Dewan Gary. And there goes Tim Chamberlain. Okay, so like a lot of really good players already off the board. All uh, mid to high 70s. Question is, what direction do I want to go with this pick? Based off my draft board, I am down to trade down. Not a ton, but maybe with a team like the Cardinals, try to get a first round pick next year. Or the Vikings. Let's, hmm, let's try the Vikings. This individual pick just doesn't have enough value. So I might as well just reach for a player I want. Dante Godwin is not his name. It's Dante Godwin. Idiot. Pretty good player. Would be an upgraded cornerback long term, but we do have Damon Arnett. So I'm not exactly stressed to take him there. We could go middle linebacker. Braxton Lucas is a mid first round player. So this would be a reach. But he's a stud. 6'4", 236, only 21 years old. Ran 4'4", 2. Amazing combine, amazing top skills. He looks like he'd be a really, really good player. Chad Davenport, if we wanted to go receiver, he looks quite good. Another receiver as well, Channing Huffman, also looks really, really good. We definitely have a number of different ways we can go with this pick. I almost want to take the linebacker just because I feel like he's the best player there. Even if his overall isn't the highest, I feel like he's the best player for this team. Just because he might have a super, super high ceiling based off his uh, his traits. His athleticism is off the charts. It's just we do have Raekwon McMillan. We do have Nick Wachowski. We do have Corey Littleton. What would be the point of that? How do I sell myself on that? Kwiatkowski's 28. That's already a selling point. Littleton's 27. That's okay. McMillan's young enough. I have to remember that I am playing for the future. This isn't one year. I'm just going to take the player I want the most. And I think that is going to be Braxton Lucas. He's only 21 years old. He can be a backup year one to Nick Witkowski, or I can work him in as maybe a sub linebacker. He seems too good to pass up. He's number 11 in the class. Took, Of course, took him at number five. Only normal development. That's the part that kind of stings a bit. But he's got 91 speed at middle linebacker, 85 tackle, 83 hit power. Block shedding is not too bad. Amazing acceleration. Coverage isn't even too bad at 62. I think this is going to be a really, really good player for the future. It just kind of sucks he does not have star better development. That's the one thing where I am a little bit disappointed about it. But other than that, I'm extremely satisfied with the selection. He seems certainly good enough to go at that particular spot. I do want that QB. I don't have to take him now. It's between safety. I could go with another linebacker. Tyson Bunny looks pretty good. Dom Swain's a late first round guy, but he looks pretty good. Let's take Dom Swain. Only a 72 overall, number 25 in the class. Took him at 37. Only normal development. Nice tackling. You'll take that. He's okay. Tell me that QB is still available. Thank you. I wasn't going to risk waiting until the fourth round. Mark Lucas out of Oklahoma. Are you going to be our QB of the future? This is the home run pick. This is why you hit the subscribe button. 75 overall, star better development, ranked at number seven in the class, and of course, the nicest pick. We took him at 69. It makes sense. Only 89 throw power, but that's not too bad. 76 deep, 85 medium, 87 short accuracy. He's got 83 speed. He looks like everything you'd want in a QB. Now, he doesn't have that prototypical huge arm. But I think he makes up for it in a number of other ways. Still a pretty good arm, for sure. 89 is no slouch. It's been, a, it's been a solid draft, but that definitely is the biggest pick by a mile. That makes our draft class, for sure. We'll go Kendall Flowers here. Looks like a solid cornerback prospect. He's a 71 overall, ranked number 40. We took him at 101. We're trying to find good value for our picks. Could be a good special teams player. It's not like he's a crazy high overall or anything, but he's a decent pick. Round six, what do you got for me? Grant Gardner, defensive tackle, mid-second round guy. Good 40 time for someone who's 311 pounds. Not exactly the strongest defensive tackle, but I mean, 30 is a pretty good amount. Ooh, okay. 
Star better development from the projected seventh round pick. 70 overall, number 50, we took him at 165. We might have something here. 85 strength is not that much. 75 block shedding is decent. 72 speed's okay. Doesn't exactly get after the QB too much. But he probably is going to be our uh, second D tackle as I'm kicked off the servers. That's, oh, that's fantastic. I almost feel like starting Lucas at QB right now just to get him like offensive rookie of the year. Because I know that that would happen if we started him at QB. Ooh, Henry Ruggs is up to superstar development. Tyrell Williams is back. He's got star. We didn't even talk about him. I honestly forgot he was on the team because he's injured in real life. Equinemius St. Brown's in here. Um, What do I want to do at QB? I honestly want to make a big trade package for Derek Carr. He's 30 years old. We got to go with our QB of the future, right? Okay, making an interesting trade to say the least. Nick Witkowski's on the move. We talked about it earlier with his age. We can't trade Derek Carr. There's not a team in the league that can afford him, except for the Jaguars. They're the only team, and they don't really have any interest in him. They have yellow, but it doesn't really uh, move the meter, so to speak. But Kwiatkowski's on the move. A third-round pick this year and next year. We're getting a first back from the Cardinals also. Uh, two guys to make the cap work in Miles and Strevler, a tackle and a quarterback. So they won't play much of an impact on the team. If we're taking a more realistic style approach, which I'm not really, but we would leave Derek Carr in another year, maybe even try to trade him in the offseason or at the midseason mark at the latest. I want Lucas to play, but I guess for this next season, he'll just play under Derek Carr. Is that the best move? I don't know that it is. He has two years remaining. We'll keep him one more. Okay, we'll do that. But I do want Lucas to start at middle linebacker. That's why I made that move. Gardner's going to start at defensive tackle too. The rest pretty much stays the same. Swain's going to start at free safety. That's probably a bad idea, but it's what's happening. LaMarcus Joyner in the nickel. Why would... We... Okay, no. Do I really want Carl Nassib as a rush end? I don't really, but Cleveland Furl, I guess, moves inside, even though he's not a defensive tackle build at all. Uh, I don't want that. I'm going to have Lucas as my sub linebacker. All right, it is what it is. We're just going to... We're going to keep it how it is. Okay. All right, I stopped the auto sim at the perfect time because we can still trade guys if we want to. We're 3-3. Three and three. Could be a playoff team. Who is a free agent, though? Richie Incognito would be a good idea to trade him right now as he is super old, down to 85. Maurice Hurst I want back. Colton Miller I want back. Richard I don't care for. Alec Ingold's a fullback. He's a good player. Not going to be really too impactful for us, but I might want him back. Mariota can go. But I really just need to trade Richie Incognito right now. I'm not even sure what his value is going to be. He's 38 years old. Okay, trading Richie Incognito and a first for the projected number one overall pick from the Dolphins. Might not end up being that high, but I'm, I'm down to swap first and trade Richie Incognito. He's just 38. Like, John Simpson is the alternative. It's not great. It is a significant downgrade, but I'm not really sure that this is a team that can really go far deep in the playoffs. I'm down to make that trade. I do want to bring back Colton Miller. Who else did I say I wanted to bring back? Maurice Hurst? Yeah. The rest, I, I really don't care about too much. Maybe Alec Ingold, but I'm not giving a fullback more than like $2 million a year at most. Yeah, Ingold wants a higher salary. I'm just not sure I can do that. It's a fullback. They just don't really even come on the field that often, especially in Madden. Colton Miller is back. Maurice Hurst is back. Big deals as well. Hurst is four years. Colton Miller is seven. I gave a massive contract to him. The money isn't super high. But I know that he's going to be expensive if we waited four years. So I'm just getting you know it out of the way now. I know he's going to be pretty good. I know he's going to develop pretty well. So I'm going to spend my coach XP. We'll probably do D-line. Have I done that already? I don't think so. So D-line and then come back for offensive line training boost. Probably in the offseason, but we will simulate to the playoffs. Could be a playoff team. It could be. Will Derek Carr lead us there? That remains to be seen. We did not make the playoffs. Finished at 6-10. No, no, no. What went wrong? Derek Carr went wrong. Just not that good. Lucas threw three passes. Had one completion for eight yards. 
Not a great rookie year from him, if I'm honest. Rushing, Josh Jacobs was very good again. Only five touchdowns, though, as most of them were vultured by Jalen Richard. Receiving Henry Ruggs. I mean, 69 catches, still couldn't get 1,000 yards. This time averaged 13 per catch, which is quite a change. 10 touchdowns for Hunter Renfro in the slot. Some of these numbers are so odd. Defensively, Braxton Lucas with a great rookie year. 119 tackles, 6 for loss, 1.5 sacks, 3 picks. What a year from him. 15 tackles for loss for Corey Littleton led the team. 6.5 sacks for Max Crosby led the team. Not good. And then 4 picks for Damon Arnett. There we go. Here we go, Damon Arnett. Three for Braxton Lucas, of course. Corey Littleton had two. This team is not playing that well on either side of the ball. Like, we had a lot of yards, top 10. I don't really think we scored too, too much. 15th in defensive yards, about middle of the pack. Yeah, 24th in points scored is really bad, clearly, out of 32. And then 20th in points allowed. We just got to be a little bit better. Ryan Tannehill wins MVP. No Raiders in there. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Ryan Tannehill. No Raiders. Defensive player of the year is Alexander Johnson. No Raiders. Offensive rookie of the year is Marquise Locke. No Raiders. Defensive rookie of the year is Braxton Lucas. Dom Swain at two. Grant Gardner at five. I'll take that. Show me some big development trade upgrades. And also show me a QB with Superstar X Factor. That'd be so sick. Oh my God, he's got it. <laughs> what a pick. Mark Lucas has Superstar X Factor. Oh, I wish I would have started him over Derek Carr. Derek Carr, you are out of here. He's got pro reads inside that eye, tight out. Yeah, I mean, get Derek Carr out of here. Tyrell Williams probably going to be traded as well. And then defensively, Gardner only has star. Lucas is up to star. I like to see that. Would be nice to see Damon Arnett go up or Trayvon Mullen go up, but they did not. But Braxton Lucas now at star development is awesome. He's up to a 78. That pick feels really, really good now because he's the same overall as Nick Kwiatkowski and also not 29 years old. He's only 22. He should be a monster for the future. What do I want to do? Corner. I still think we need a corner. Still could upgrade at safety. And then offensively, we need a guard. We maybe even need just in the entirety of the IOL. Hudson is too old. 33. Gabe Jackson is like 31 now, probably. Yeah, geez. Yeah, I'm down to let everybody else walk. We need to trade Derek Carr. I hope this is a stack draft class because we could really take advantage here. That's what these 20-year rebuilds are all about. Just loading up on really good, talented young players and building through the draft. All right, pretty good trade for us here. Derek Carr, Tyrell Williams, and a fourth for Cesar Ruiz, and a first from the Saints. This is just a big salary cap dump. Tyrell Williams is 30 years old. Cap hit above 10 mil. Derek Carr, certainly above 30. His cap hit is above 20 mil. We're improving on the offensive line with the addition of Cesar Ruiz, only 23 years old. And we are getting a first-round pick, which we can either trade or, of course, draft a player, depending on how the draft board looks. We have our QB of the future, without question, Mark Lucas. He is 24, so a little bit of an older player going into his second year, but superstar X-Factor, almost an 80 overall. What more could you want? Fred Warner is here, as is Jair Alexander, and nobody wants him. Why does that happen so consistently? How do I not offer on Jair Alexander? He's 25 years old. He's got superstar X-Factor. He's a 97 overall. Like, I will give him a massive contract. There are so many players who should have offers that just don't. Like, why does Harold Landry have no offers other than me right now? Why does Marcus Davenport have none? Uchenna Nwosu, none. Trey Turner, even none. David Njoku. Why do these guys not have offers? It's so odd. Oh, we got Harold Landry. Let's go. Okay, big addition to our defense. He's going to slide down and play right end. There's really no reason for us to, uh, to transition to a 3-4 at this moment in time. No reason. So we're just going to move Landry down. He'll play right end. Really big upgrade over Cleveland Furl. Again, I hope he can work out in real life. But as far as this 20-year rebuild, he is a depth player at this point. Harold Landry was just way too good and way too cheap with no one going after him to not sign. 
Should I sign Deontay Harris? He got superstar development for being a special teams player, but no one's going after him. Don't have Tyrell Williams anymore. He could develop into being really, really, really good. We got Jair Alexander. We got Deontay Harris. We got Jordan Berry. We're getting pretty much everybody we want, and really for not that expensive. And because we just signed Harold Landry, I'm not going to pick up the fifth-year option on Cleveland Furl. I'm not going to. Might end up trading him. Josh Jacobs, I will absolutely pick up his fifth-year option without question. And we got Greg the Leg. This Las Vegas Raiders team is about to be super overpowered. We have the players. We have the picks. We should be really, really good. We pick at number two overall, also number nine, and also, what, 17? Yeah. We should get a lot better here. Zaire Collins, 5'8", 185. Early first-round player available in the fourth round. We don't have a fourth round pick. That could be a second round pick. That might be the move. Okay. Great tight end to back up Darren Waller, potentially. The Giants at number one take Luke Hansen, a 77 overall right end. And we are on the clock at number two. I really shouldn't take this pick. I really shouldn't. JD Walden looks to be a very good player. I just uh, don't really need him so much. We can get a lot of value for the future by trading down, so I have to. Trading number two in the draft for number five, number 34, and a first-round pick from Miami next year. It just makes too much sense for us to trade down. So getting picks for the future, stacking this team for the future, that's the way to get it done. That's exactly what we're doing. J.D. Walden's still available, by the way. Even though I was leaning towards Jose Godfrey, just because I feel like I can move him inside a defensive tackle. 6'4", 275, a little bit light, but he still has 10 pounds on Cleveland Furl, who was doing it for us. Not quite as strong, but he's got top skills that are really, really good. So I might, I might do that. I should probably trade down again, though. Maybe just wait till number nine. I don't know. Trading number five in the draft and number 37 for a first round pick next year, a second round pick next year, and a third round pick next year from Denver. Another trade that I'm very comfortable making. There's just no one that I really, really want too badly at number five. I'm down to just move down to number nine, reassess the board. There goes Jose Godfrey, 75 overall. Not too pressed with losing out on him. There just wasn't really anyone I wanted too badly in the draft. Alan Dorsett looks okay. He's got Dwayne Haskins' face. I mean, that's just who that is. But I have noticed that they are just better players later down the board in this class, so I'm not like too pressed to move up for a guy or take a guy too high when I don't have to. With this pick, I'm just going to take Oscar Bradley. He might be available at number 17. He might not. Too good to pass up on. 75 overall, ranked number 6. This is like would have been Jose Godfrey. He's just someone who could come off the edge. Normal development kind of stinks, but 88 speed, 78 finesse moves, quite good. Nice block shedding, high strength. Very interesting player. Trading number 17 in the draft for number 50 and 82. I think there are a lot of people who aren't going to like that trade, but we are doing a couple things one moving down obviously but moving down to where there are going to be really good players available there goes an 80 overall running back not that we would have taken them but they're just better players down here where i actually want to you know pick and take these guys and also they're going to be much cheaper which is big as well might as well take both these receivers steve bankston bankston is a 71 overall only normal development but not too bad he's got great deep route running nice medium route running Decent catching overall. He's a deep threat. Clearly, number 29 in the class. Took him at 34. Not too bad. And this is a Z Zaire Collins spot. It's only 5'8", 185. Looks like a gadget type player, but could be really, really good. He's a 75 overall, ranked number 7. Took him at 50. Only normal development, but decent speed, great acceleration, pretty good route running in general, pretty good catching in general. 85 catching coming out is uh, really pretty good. And let's take the tight end here in the third round. Owen Navarre out of Penn State, 73 overall. Normal development, number 17 in the class. Took him at 82. Good backup tight end, good speed, good catching. Pretty good catching traffic. Route running is not too bad for a tight end either. I don't want to take another receiver, but he's just very clearly the best player available. John Cummings at a USF. There's a joke to be made there, and he's a 69 overall. Whatever. Uh, you know, he was just the best player available. That's what it comes down to. Looks pretty similar, actually, to the other players that we drafted at receiver. So that's not exactly uh, thrilling about those previous two guys. 
This will be the team for 2022. Looking for Henry Ruggs to really come into his own. And Lucas, as his first season starting, should really, really play well. So looking forward to that. Defense is a little odd. Cleveland Furl has been moved to defensive tackle where he's a pretty high overall. And uh, I do have to get rid of Carl Nassib at some point. He's getting paid way too much. Like, way too much to be Carl Nassib. Only one year remaining. So I guess I'm not really pressured to trade him. Not that anyone would even want him. But this is going to be the team. I have high hopes. I will see you guys at the midseason mark. Three and four at the midseason mark. Not ideal, but still second in the division. So this is not a team that doesn't have a shot at the playoffs. We are going to accept this Max Crosby breakout challenge. I doubt he gets it just because, like, holding the Dolphins to less than 75 rushing yards and, a, and one rushing TD, unlikely. Max Crosby getting two plus sacks, unlikely, but maybe. Whenever I get a chance to accept those, I do, because why not? Rodney Hudson is an impending free agent. Probably going to be a one-year deal for him. Trent Brown would like to bring back for a couple more years. Trayvon Mullen I need to bring back. Max Crosby, Jonathan Abram, Hunter Renfro, Corey Littleton, Gabe Jackson. It's the entire team. Everyone's a free agent. Are we going to have nearly the amount of money for this that we need? I don't think so. I don't think we're going to have close to it. $104 million in cap room before negotiating? Maybe. It's going to be tight. That's actually been pretty easy so far. Jonathan Abram, Max Crosby, Trayvon Mullen, Trent Brown, Rodney Hudson, all back. It's a two-year deal for Hudson. Five years, maybe not five, four years for Trent Brown. Trayvon Mullen's back for like five or six. Crosby's back for five or six. Jonathan Abram's back long-term. Hunter Renfro, I don't think we need. He's got really high catching, not the fastest. I said he was going to be on the team for 20 years. He's just really not worth his contract when we have other guys underneath him that I'm pretty confident in. So I don't really think we need to bring him back as good as he is. And then Corey Littleton, he is 28. A three-year deal isn't the worst for him, even though we are going to watch him regress. But it's, just not, it's not the worst. So he's back. LaMarcus Joyner, we can't bring back. Cleveland Furl, if he had, like, star development, maybe. But I'm not, like, too fussed about it. Foster Moreau, we don't really need. He's going to be too expensive for a backup tight end when I just drafted one. So I'm out on that. Isaiah Johnson can walk. We have other corners. Equinemius St. Brown, we don't need. So a lot of guys who were free agents that we had to bring back. But I think we did a pretty good job of that. So we would not make the playoffs again. However, we did finish at 8-8, eight and eight, so we improved quite a bit, although still not there. Mark Lucas had a really good second year, even though it's his first year. Our defense in terms of yards was really good, too. I kind of wonder what held us back. Points scored, we weren't very high. Henry Ruggs dominated. I don't know. Our defense seemed to be really good. So I guess just 18 interceptions from Mark Lucas is not great, but uh, a better year than what we had from Derek Carr ever. And then rushing Josh Jacobs, 1,100 yards, average 5.3 per carry. Just, we didn't get into the end zone enough. Only six touchdowns for him. Receiving Henry Ruggs, led the league in yards, 94 catches, almost 1,400 yards and 13 touchdowns. He was awesome. Darren Waller was really, really good as well. Hunter Renfro uh, had a good year. I said Henner, Hunter Renfro, odd. And then defensively, Braxton Lucas, another pretty solid year for him. Nine tackles for loss, also at half a sack and a pick. Max Crosby with 14 tackles for loss, although Harold Landry really had a good year. 12 and a half sacks. No one else was even remotely close. And then two picks for Braxton Lucas led the way. Even though we're not getting a ton of turnovers or even pressure on the quarterback, we're limiting yards, and that's fine. Mahomes wins MVP. Almost shocked to see no Raiders in there. I, I thought that Mark Lucas might get some votes. He finishes at 7th for Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year is Dante Hightower. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Duncan Barber for the Colts. No Raiders. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Jose Godfrey, who I was going to draft, but I went for Oscar Bradley instead, who finishes at 4th, despite really not even playing a lot. So that is kind of cool. Yeah, again, Hunter Renfro is good. I just don't think we need him. Gabe Jackson is regressing. I'm down to let him walk. Cleveland Furl can walk. LaMarcus Joyner can walk. We talked about everybody already. I'm saving my money, bringing in players who are going to be more impactful. And it's just not those guys, unfortunately, for them. We have almost 45 mil to spend in free agency if I want to do so. Kareem Hunt is in here. J.J. Watt. That's tempting as always. Oh, Henry Ruggs went up to superstar X-Factor. 
He really is going to be the greatest receiver of all time. He's so fast. You can't teach speed. You ever heard that? You probably have because it's a pretty common expression. Rodney Hudson retired, by the way. Look at Henry Ruggs, dude. That's so dumb. <laughs> 99 speed, 99 acceleration, 93 catching, 97 deep route running. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be a really, really big problem for defenses, which you love to see. That is awesome. What is his superstar X Factor? It looks like a bone. What is that? Ankle breaker. I likely call that the boner. That's, that's. Might need to work on that. Lucas is up to superstar development, by the way. This pick is looking better and better as more seasons go on. 81 overall, only 23 years old. Superstar dev. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty good. Nice on coverage as well. Anyone else go up? Not that I can see. Probably not. But things are looking good for this team right now. I think I'll probably just draft offensive linemen rather than sign some of these guys. Don't really want to give out long-term deals. Corey Lindsley, maybe two years, I would take. That's actually okay. I'll sign Corey Lindsley to, two -year, to a two-year contract. It's not really that expensive. I can probably even bring the money down a bit as well since no one else is offering on him. So that is not too bad. 82 total points. That should be good enough to sign him. We save a little bit of money by doing that. And hopefully we sign him here as we go to stage two. And we do. Excellent. Fifth year options. Yeah, I think we're going to pick up Henry Ruggs. <laughs> I think that's going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Also, Damon Arnett. Um, He probably is not going to be too expensive based on where he was picked. Around like, what, 19? Yeah, we'll, we'll keep him. That's okay. It's only another extra year. That's fine. And it is time for the 2023 NFL Draft. I don't even know where we need to focus right now. Our offense is quite good, but defensively, I don't really think we need anything other than defensive tackle, really. I'm fine to let a lot of these guys develop. It's really just D-tackle free safety. Cornerback, it's not really a huge need. So just maybe even a linebacker too with Corey Littleton regressing. But D-tackle free safety, those are my two biggest ones. Corners can move around. Defensive ends can move over. So D-line and DBs. That's where we're looking at. And maybe linebacker as well, because Corey Littleton. We need everything. Okay, the best player available on defense. How are we always in that position? Harold Richards just doesn't even have a picture. So that's a thing, I guess. All right, we picked a bad uh, draft to invest a lot of picks in because this is not a super strong draft class from as far as I can tell. Pretty disappointed about that. So this might be big trade down city per usual. I think I'm just going to take the player I want now. Calvin Farmer at number three, middle linebacker, should be super good. <laughs> wow. Probably the best middle linebacker I've ever drafted, just based on the overall and development rate. He's number two in the class. He's a 77 overall middle linebacker. You just don't see that. So that's crazy good. 91 speed, 87 tackle, 84 hit power. Decent block shed, great pursuit, acceleration. Zone coverage is pretty good. What a player. Yeah, that's going to be our uh, Corey Littleton replacement for sure. I made the right move taking him at number three. I would have been devastated if he got taken uh, at number seven, but or before number seven. Now is time to get rid of this pick because it was either take him at number three or risk, uh, or risk him not being there, trade away that pick, and then take him at seven if he was available, but there's no one in the range that I want right now. I feel like I'm going brain dead. Can I get this sentence out, please? All right, trading a first round pick and a third round pick for a first and a second next year from the Lions. I'm just constantly in a perpetual state in these 20 year rebuilds of trying to be better for the next year and not, you know, all about this year. So, you know, if we're fine, if our team's fine, there's no reason to take players just to take players at this point. There just isn't. Although David Johnson is quite good, 5'11", only 181. He's a light receiver, but he also ran 4'3", 6", and looks to be quite good. We're going to take him. Can never have too many receivers. Number six in the class, especially fast ones, and we're building a team of receivers that can fly. 80 short route running and deep route running. High spectacular catch. Change of direction's okay, but good catching, and most importantly, really good speed. I have no one on my draft board here. It's only the second round. Again, this was just not that good of a class from what I could tell. 
Hold that thought. Dalvin Gordon looks pretty good out of Auburn. We're going to take him. 74 overall, only normal development. Ranked number 17 in the class. Took him at 39. Not too bad. Good speed. He's well-rounded. I mean, I don't think he can start, though. He's, I don't, he certainly can't. Decent center prospects here. Might, might as well take him. He's a late second-round guy, so this is not going to be a good pick. But his combine was crazy. His top skills look decent. Might be something we can develop. 70 overall at number 56. Interesting. Maybe it just was a super deep draft class, even if it wasn't, like, top-heavy. Nice number on him there, too. 86 strength, decent run blocking. He looks like a really, really good center. We'll let the CPU handle the rest. But interesting draft. That's all I have to say. Do I start Farmer at right outside linebacker already? He's a 79 overall there. Is that better than Corey Littleton? Now, obviously, it's not because 81's better than 79. But... Corey Littleton is 29 and regressing versus 79 and developing. I might have to make a move. All right, really interesting trade here. One I'm happy with. We're trading Corey Littleton, Grant Gardner, 74 overall D tackle with star development. So that kind of stinks to lose out on him. We're also trading a first round pick, but we're getting back Derwin James, one of the best safeties in the NFL when he's actually on the field and healthy. And he is going to be our starting free safety. He'll make a nice pairing with Derwin James. He is Derwin James, but that's how good he is. He plays both safety spots. Jonathan Abram is going to be our starting strong safety. Derwin James can move over to free safety. And that's where he'll uh, make a nice pairing with Jonathan Abram. All right, there we go. So we do have Oscar Bradley. We could move him over to defensive tackle. I think he's only like 250, though. So, no. Not going to do that. I don't think Max Crosby is very uh, heavy either. Like, he's someone who, in my head, I'm like, he's got to be 270. And then I think he's only listed at like 255 or something like that. Oh, he is 270. So, I'm I'm both right and wrong. He's going to play D-tackle. This defense is actually about to be so unbelievable. I'm stoked. I'm so excited. Offense looks pretty good as well, except for John Simpson. That's not great. But I think Curtis is going to be our starting center after Corey Lindsley's contract ends. He should be pretty good by then. Receiving core is interesting to say the least. I might take Henry Ruggs out of the slot and put Collins there so his numbers get crazy. He gets upgraded to star development or something. Or we could start the rookie David Johnson there. Which, uh, maybe I'll opt to do that instead, just to see if we can get that development trade upgrade. So, Johnson's going to move up to our third receiver. Back to specialist, Crosby, Hurst up the middle, Bradley, Landry off the edge. Farmer, I can put as my sub-linebacker, just to see if we can get a good development trade on him. That's what it's all about, getting these development trades so we can upgrade these players even faster. So I'll spend some coach XP, meet you guys at the midseason mark. Again, high hopes for this team. This has to be a playoff team. I would be shocked if it were not. So I'm not really sure what the issue is. I just checked our uh, offense and defensive rankings. Very bad. We're only one in six, last in the AFC West. This is insane. Why is this happening? Josh Jacobs is an impending free agent. Who else is here? Darren Waller is 30 now. Cesar Ruiz, Brian Edwards, I'm gonna let walk. Good player, just we don't need him. Oh, I didn't even talk about Amik Robertson. He was such a good player at Louisiana Tech. He would have been fun to talk about, but just not good enough to make a difference in this particular rebuild. But the top three guys I need to sign to uh, deals, Darren Waller's a bit of a wild card because he's 30, but I would sign him to a two or three year deal pretty easily. He wants four. I don't want that. Also, I know he's not face scanned to the game, I wish they didn't have him as an Asian man, but I guess it's okay. He wants a bigger bonus, and he wants a four-year deal. I'd almost rather franchise tag him for a couple seasons, as Josh Jacobs is back long-term. I don't want to sign Darren Waller to a four-year deal. I just don't want to do that. I signed Cesar Ruiz to a six-year deal, though, until he's 30. He should be great. We're not making the playoffs. I don't know how we had a one-win start. This is like the Falcons in real life, where they're a pretty good team, and they just can't seem to win games. They just won in real life, as I mentioned this. They just beat the uh, Panthers as I record this. But uh, this team is way better than a one-win team. 
I don't know what our record's gonna be at the end of the year, but not nearly good enough. We made the playoffs at seven and nine. What is going on? We were third in the AFC West with a losing record by two games. I guess, it's, I mean, is a losing record by one game because we would have been 500 at eight and eight. Either way, ninth best offense in terms of yards. 20, I guess our defense is really, really bad. Is that what's holding us back? We didn't score a ton of points. I don't know. That it's, These numbers are so odd. Mark Lucas was pretty good. Good year. Don't hate that. Josh Jacobs was excellent. His touchdowns are not getting vultured anymore, but we're scoring fewer of them, I feel like. David Johnson was electric in the slot as a rookie. Henry Ruggs was still really, really good. Only three touchdowns, though. Darren Waller was really good. Deontay Harris was pretty solid. Defensively, Braxton Lucas had a great year. Wanted Farmer to do more, but still two and a half sacks, nine tackles for loss. You'll take that. 10 tackles for loss for Harold Landry, including 14 sacks. Seven and a half for Max Crosby up the middle. Bradley at six and a half. Maurice Hurst with three. Six picks for Jair. Our defense is too talented to be getting crushed like this as Ryan Tannehill wins MVP. Really, no Raiders in there. Offensive player of the year, Ryan Tannehill. Mark Lucas at nine. Defense player of the year is Kenneth Murray. Harold Landry at seven. Offensive rookie of the year is David Johnson. Okay, show me a development trade upgrade at Super Bowl week. And then Calvin Farmer finishes at second for defensive rookie of the year. He's already up to an 84 overall. My word, Dalvin Gordon in there, 76 overall at number 10. Are we going to beat the Chiefs here in the wild card? I don't think it's happening. But it happened. 34-28. And the Bengals went 15-1. Unreal. <laughs> How is that possible? The Bengals won 15 games. Where do they rank here? Really good in terms of total offense. Scored a lot of points. Is Bengals offense the move? We see them make the playoffs quite a bit. Their defense was really good. I mean, might try out Cincinnati playbooks. They went 15 and one overall. Like that's ridiculous. I'll try double Cincinnati playbook next year. But we're going to see if we can beat them in the divisional advance of the conference championship. And we did. 31-24. Maybe we're fine sticking with what we have. A 7-9 and nine team is in the conference championship. We're getting hot at the right time, clearly. Can we beat the Browns? Playing for a shot at the Super Bowl. Or playing, exactly, playing to make the Super Bowl. And we didn't make it. Oh, we did make it. I didn't think we did because, uh, you know, how many things we had up top. Usually you just see the game. We have made the Super Bowl at seven and nine. Didn't force any of the games. I think that's pretty obvious. I obviously, uh, I hate to say it. I just don't care enough to do that. It doesn't really affect the video too much, but no force wins on any of these. We have just gotten hot at the right time and we're in the Super Bowl now. I'm shocked, but the Packers are in here. This is seven and nine team that has made it all the way. Now, Trivia question for you guys in the chat. In the comment section, I should say. This is not live. But I am live pretty often. Twitch.tv slash bangle. Link is in the description. Also, on my second channel, uh, I do quite a bit. Like, uh, play GeoGuessr a lot. Open real-life NFL cards. So, those links are in the description. Twitch.tv slash bangle. YouTube.com slash bangle plays. Check those out, please. But, trivia question for you guys. What is the worst record for a team to still make the Super Bowl? I don't know what it is myself, but... I guess we will hop in here, see if we can win the Super Bowl. In a 20-year rebuild, it's kind of tough to hop in because the video is already going to be like two and a half hours long minimum. This is making it even longer, but we'll see if we can see a Super Bowl animation. Close game so far, hopping in, in the second half, only have a one-point lead, and it goes away. And our one-point lead is back. Should we hop in here? We just went down by 12 points with a minute and 14 remaining. It's not looking good. Honestly, the only thing that would put us back in this game is a bomb. We just need Henry Ruggs to run past somebody. And he's fast enough. And he caught it. He's <laughs> down at the 20 already. Okay. We need an onside kick even if we score, though. So, it's not going to be enough. Ah, dude, how is that not a touchdown? That's going to end the game right there. Because we didn't score. <laughs> we didn't score on that, man. We got down at the 1. 
We got a Darren Waller touchdown. It's going to be too little too late. I guess I should have jumped in earlier. It's a 20-year rebuild, man. It's not about the gameplay. It's about the entire team building process. But we need an onside kick and a bomb. And the odds of getting an onside kick are low. All right, didn't get the onside kick. So we have lost the Super Bowl. Sad times. Oh, Farmer's got superstar dev. It's a fun way to find out. Devastating to lose the Super Bowl, but looks like Mark Lucas just did not play well enough. Deontay Harris is up to an 87, like that. Johnson got star dev, so that's really why we played him in the slot. That's awesome. And then, I mean, look at everyone. Raekwon McMillan is up to superstar. Lucas has superstar. Farmer has superstar, which is great. Did he get that or did he have it? Looks like he had it. Looks like we drafted him with superstar development. So that is awesome. This team is looking really, really good. Not even sure what we need. I don't really want to give Darren Waller a four-year deal. He's regressed down, uh, down to an 89. Like, he's still good. But I, I don't really want to give him a long-term deal. What about that? Oh, he resigns for two. Okay, that's not too bad. Because that's like franchise tag money anyway. Even less than that. Do I want to do anything in free agency? Uh, I don't. Ooh, DeAndre Swift is here. We have a 99 overall running back. Leave it. Leave it. Do I want anybody? I really don't. Jonathan Taylor's in here. Like, we could use a good backup running back. How expensive are they going to be? Not even that expensive. Taylor's a power guy. Or can be. Would I rather have J.K. Dobbins, though? I can, I can get whoever I want. Why not DeAndre Swift? Why not? And Isaiah Simmons is in here. 26 already. We don't need him. We don't need him. I'm fine. Don't be crazy. Ooh, we got DeAndre Swift. There's our backup running back. We're set. I got to hold on to my money for now, though. So the only thing I'm going to do is potentially bring some guys back if their fifth-year option is here. Braxton Lucas, yes. He is a beast. We definitely want him around. All right, let's see what we need in the draft. Probably just going to simulate to our pick. I'm not moving up. We have our quarterback. It seems like two really good QBs at the top, though. And uh, we'll just see what's available. We're probably to the point of the rebuild where I'm going to stop simulating at the midseason mark and just take things from season to season. So there's some really good players here. Like Antoine Sprinkle looks really good. Ashton Melvin looks really good. I'm not going to keep taking receivers. I'm going to take a center. Tracy Young out of Florida. He looks like one of the best centers I've ever seen. So I'm going to test to see how good he is. He is number one in the entire class, 78 overall. Only normal development, but Corey Lindsley, who? We got Tracy Young now. He is so good. If I just take a backup QB here, could have really good trade value. We're going to go Jesse Chapman. No one else is worth taking, and he actually is a really good player. 73 overall, star better development. Ranked number 25, we took him at 51. 90 throw power, too. Clearly not going to compete for a starting job, but... Really good player to take. We'll have the CPU handle the rest. And let's get started for, what is this, 2024? 2020, I think 2024. All right, try and double Cincinnati playbook. We'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm interested to see. This is going to be the team for season number, what are we, five? Something like that. Probably around season 10, we're going to simulate five years and then pick it up from there. But really solid team overall. I think we can all agree. I'll probably put Henry Ruggs back in the slot, maybe. DeAndre Swift is our third down back. Why not? He's pretty good, so I'm cool with that. 91 overall, 93 offense, 89 defense. Y'all seen the team. I think we should just sim uh, simulate to the playoffs. And we'll take it from there. Gonna have to start doing that. You know, as I mentioned, these rebuilds are a marathon and not a sprint. So we gotta start sprinting through some areas. It's not really how you run a marathon, is it? I, eh, whatever. First round by. So maybe Cincinnati playbook's a move. We went 13-3. That's what I'm talking about. Second best offense. Seems like we were heavily ground-based based on Mark Lucas's numbers. And we had the best offense in the NFL. Josh Jacobs had 17 rushing touchdowns. Mark Lucas was solid. Just didn't throw any interceptions. I'll take that. Rushing. Let Josh Jacobs do it all. DeAndre Swift almost had a thousand yards as well as the backup. They pretty much split carries, but they're both really good. DeAndre Swift says, eh, I don't really care about holding on to the football. Fumbles three times in his attempts. I don't like that. 
figure that out, DeAndre. Oh, we even got the DeAndre Swift jersey behind me. In case you've not seen that before, you probably have. Henry Ruggs, 1,111 yards oh, and almost, or 11, 11. You get what I'm trying to say? It's 1,110. Five touchdowns. Deontay Harris was pretty good. Darren Waller was pretty good. Not a whole lot of effort from our third receiver. Defensively, Braxton Lucas had a very good year. Seven sacks from Calvin Farmer. Let's see. Max Crosby had nine. Bradley had six and a half. Harold Landry only had six and a half. How is that possible? Interceptions, th you know, not all interesting. Two from Farmer, two from Derwin James, two from Jair. Seems like we had a decent bit as a team, but no one individually played all that well. But our defense was dominant in terms of yards, so I don't really care about individual numbers at that point. As Ryan Tannehill wins MVP with the Patriots, he plays so well in simulation, and I, it's got to be the playbooks. He just gets lucky. This dude's name is Chet Seri. Good lord. Okay. Um, no Raiders in there. Josh Jacobs, I thought, would maybe get a vote or two. Offensive player of the year, I'm sure he will. Nope, it's Mark Lucas at eight. Defensive player of the year, Fred Warner with the Steelers now. Calvin Farmer at five. Offense rookie of the year, Lorenzo Walters. Mike Bernard at five. Defense rookie of the year, Thaddeus Yates. And Tremon Royal. He, he's on the team. All these guys are. I don't know who they are, though. But the CPU draft them, and they were okay, I guess. Divisional round of the playoffs. We are a 93 overall. We're going to be a tough team to beat. I think I'm going to buy... I mean, I can buy whatever. It's going to be, like, re-sign packages at this point just to save money on these guys. So, O-line, re-sign. D-line, re-sign. Why not? There we go. Should be able to save a little bit of money that way. And we'll see if we can beat the Bills here in the divisional in 2024. And we can, 35-13. We got the Colts in the conference championship. Show me a win. We lost 35-28. Anyone make the Pro Bowl? I usually never show this. But, um... Josh Jacobs is in there. I'll take that. We have... Not really seeing a whole lot of Raiders here. It'd be nice to see the team that these guys are all on. Colton Miller made it. Cesar Ruiz made it. Corey Lindsley made it. Did I her entire offensive line? Trent Brown as well. Just no right guard. But other than that, we were great. And then Max Crosby is in there. Farmer is in there. Love that. Let's see Jay on Brown. Um, no corners. No safeties. Oh, okay. Oh, no. This, see, this is the problem that you run into is that you didn't re-sign these guys at the midseason mark and it's your last chance to negotiate. Henry Ruggs is in here. Mark Lucas is in here. Now, they're the only two, but they're huge free agents. So, we need to prioritize here. I think Lucas is a priority. Oh, no. We're going we're gonna to be barely able to afford these guys. It's going to have to be... A seven-year deal would be wise. I might as well just do it. Please sign. Exactly. Thank you. He's back. Henry Ruggs, I need you. I will franchise tag if we can't quite afford this, which we're not going to be able to. You're not interested in signing? Uh, I'm not interested in w what you care about. No, you're, you're going to be back. And the rest of these guys are going to walk. That's fine. We can't afford them. It is what it is. We're super negative in the cap uh, right now. But that's okay. We'll figure it out. Fifth year options. Oscar Bradley. Is that the name of our middle linebacker? It would... Uh, I think it is. We'll pick up his fifth year. Is that who it is? Oscar Bradley? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I know that's not what you guys want to hear. You're invested in this team, or you, you, hopefully you are. It's not our middle linebacker. Who is it? Oscar Bradley. Oh! He's our starting left end. Now we want him back. Yeah, that was good. That was good. We want him back. No value? I don't know how that's possible. He's a left end with 90 speed, 89 finesse moves. Holy. All right, what positions do I need? Center or right guard? Young can move back to center if I need. We have a decent center. I feel like receiver's pretty good. Our offense is great. That's not really the concern. Defensively, Raquan McMillan is up to superstar X-Factor, by the way. Farmer's up to superstar X-Factor. Defensive tackle, maybe? Corner? Oh, it could be corner. Team's really good. It's just about uh, getting players for the future when 
our highly rated players become way too expensive, which is like now, pretty much. Whose name is Randy Gandy? <laughs> imagine, imagine being named Randy Gandy. Ben Little looks a little good. No, he really does actually though. Someone I might watch, probably will draft him. Let's take Ben Little here. 75 overall, not bad. Number nine in the class, took him at 29. Only normal development. It's pretty well-rounded. High strength. Do I take another quarterback here? It's a good spot to take one. He's lasting. He's a decent guy. Number 18 in the class. 73 overall. Star better development. These are trade pieces. He also looks really, really good. Like, if I drafted this guy year one, I'd be stoked. But we have our quarterback. Now, he is quite expensive. Roy Mays might just be a player I hold on to. He looks incredible. Take Calvin Bradford here. Looks pretty good. And he is. 74 overall, number 16 in the class. Took him at 93. Now we have our defensive tackle depth. Nice speed. Good black shed. High strength. You'll take that from a D tackle. I'll let the CPU handle the rest. What was the dev on my backup QB? Only star. We got to trade him. But we don't have to right now. Probably should wait until his contract is about to expire so we can get into the 80s. Deontay Harris is a 90 now. And we got him for very, very cheap. He can't run routes. That's his biggest issue. At least not short. He's nice at it, but it's not that good. Like, at all. He's a deep threat. Our receiving core is okay. Better than okay. Our receiving core is good, but it's not like Deontay Harris is, like, a typical great receiver. I'm trying to decide what we have to do. Because these guys are just too expensive to hold on to long term. That's really what it comes down to. But... Really solid team for the most part. Farmer? I might move him to the inside. Now nah, we'll leave things as they are. Why not? And um, I suppose we will simulate to the end of the season. It's going to be good. It's going to get really, really expensive to hold on to these guys. When you build a juggernaut like this team is, it is not not cheap and not sustainable is the biggest thing that's why these 20 year rebuilds are so interesting because you have to get guys in and out constantly because if you sign guys with huge contracts it means that the rest of the team is going to be a lot worse long term which is uh it it sets up a lot of interesting decisions another first round buy for us 12 and 4 this time broncos didn't do too well at 2 and 14 fifth best offense this time mark lucas really upped his his numbers with more touchdowns, but also through more interceptions. That's what happens when you throw the ball a little bit more. Ooh, what a year for Jesse Chapman. Four for four for 50 yards in a TD. Okay. Josh Jacobs was quite good, as was DeAndre Swift. We are so close to having two 1,000-yard rushers. I don't think I've ever done that before in Madden Sim. David Johnson with quite a year. Darren Waller as well as Henry Ruggs drops off a little bit, but had nine touchdowns. You will take that year for sure. Calvin Farmer, very solid year. 14 tackles for loss from Howard Landry led the team. I'm sure 12 sacks will as well, and it does. Interceptions, two from Jonathan Abram. I mean, a lot of guys had one. Not going to bother looking at defensive touchdowns. Lamar Jackson wins MVP. Really, no votes for Mark, what's his name? Mark Lucas. No, shocked. He was 10th uh, in Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year, Miles Garrett. No Raiders. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Spencer Weber. Luke... Luke last name. I don't want to make it sound like I'm saying huge dick when I say his last name, so I'm just won't, I'm not going to say it. Uh, and then uh, no Raiders for defensive rookie of the year, even though we had a handful of defensive tackles, we could have seen a little bit of playing time. But you'll take a first round bye. We'll see who we have in the divisional, and it is the Cleveland Browns. All right, let's beat the Browns. Get to the AFC Championship. Here we go. 28-17. It's the Bills. I feel like they beat us last year. Not going to happen two years in a row. He prays. Okay, good. It's going to be Giants Raiders in the Super Bowl in Miami. Welcome to Miami. 93 overall. Any development trade upgrades? Um, No, I don't think so on offense. Dude, what the hell? Johnson's up to an 89. That's the most casual jump to an 89 overall ever. He's so good at Mays is up to a 77 overall. He hasn't even played. We don't know his development trade at all. Could be really, really good. And I know it'd be like super weird, but 
the money might work out to where Mark Lucas is not our best option. I think in the Bengals rebuild, um, I ended up getting rid of my QB. And actually, I didn't. I held on to two for a while. I, I had like 50 mil invested in uh, two quarterbacks. Clearly, they were both not going to play. But yeah, really, really good team. We didn't see any development changes, which a little stinky. But we got the Giants in the Super Bowl. I am a Giants fan in real life, but no mercy here. The Giants are an embarrassment in real life. 84 overall and in the Super Bowl. Murdered them. Giants are finally on the board. We're up 17-7, though. 17-14. Just keep scoring, please. It's not going to... We're going to get killed again. We're going to lose. It's 21-17. Please, Raiders. Fight. Fight. Oh, there we go. That's game. 34-21. Defense clutched up when it mattered most. Thank you. And a Super Bowl is coming to Las Vegas. The first Super Bowl in Las Vegas Raiders history. The first Super Bowl for Vegas, man. I, I like that we've done this. It took me almost three hours of recording time. Lord knows where you guys are in the video right now. But we won a Super Bowl. Love it. Oh yeah, Henry Ruggs is back here. I had to franchise tag him. Do I have any money? I already am not looking forward to seeing this. Braxton Lucas is here, Raekwon McMillan. Oh man, this is gonna sting. Show me, show me 40 mil at least. Oh, two mil, that's no good. <laughs> that's not good at all. I do need Henry Ruggs back. He's a 99 overall. You look to retain those type of players. And he wants to play for a new team. No, uh, so not gonna happen. Braxton Lucas, I can afford to bring him back. Five-year deal. And then I can franchise tag Henry Ruggs. I'm going to be playing in the negative again as Braxton Lucas resigns. That's great. Darren Waller has to go. 33 has to go. Raekwon McMillan, 30 years old. I get that he's Superstar X Factor. Really nice. Has to go. Can't afford him. Owen Navarre. Um, he's good. He is 26. We can give him this contract. All right, he's back. So he's our new starting tight end. And then I have to franchise tag Henry Ruggs. He's so expensive and he's crippling my cap. Has to happen. I don't even want to see how negative I'm going to be here. It's going to be like, what, 20 mil? 18-7. I, I don't really see where we have much wiggle room, though. That's the thing. Henry Ruggs is getting paid a lot, as is Jair. He's almost off the books, though. That drops off quite a bit in 2027. And I still probably would like to extend him even longer. Colton Miller is 30 now. But he's still a pretty good team-friendly contract. That's why you do those long-term deals. Trent Brown gets a little bit expensive. Bradley's super expensive. But he's almost off the books. It's going to be uh, pretty tough decisions for us in the near future. But that's okay. Fifth-year options, Calvin Farmer, yeah. I mean, we have to. Barely on the field? Are you smoking crack? No, he was barely on the field. He played every down. He's a starter. Yeah, we got to pick up David Johnson, too. He's almost a 90. Like, the, again, the most casual 90 ever. Have to bring him back. And we will simulate to the draft. We need better players. And, of course, the team is good. When I say we need better players, I mean better players like three years from now, not at this exact moment, because this team, as Joe Rogan goes to the Giants, nice. Uh, but this team is going to be uh, not great in a couple years. I wouldn't have taken that last prospect. Probably was doing DMT, would have tested positive for that at the Combine. Pretty good corner here, Damian Hayden. The Raiders have drafted D. Hayden before, except it was uh, DJ Hayden. I want to say it was the first round pick. I want to say it went to like number 14. I remember that being a pretty big reach because uh, he was a good player. I want to say at Florida State, but uh, I think he had like a heart issue. Was it DJ Hayden? Is that who I'm thinking of? He was a first round pick number 12 in 2013. Went to Houston though. So definitely not Florida State. Hmm. All right, that, that's our pick. Uh, I don't know why I felt like DJ Hayden went to Florida State. Like, I don't remember him playing there, but in my head, I remember, like, 
when he got drafted as that as the school. Clearly it wasn't. Weird memory I have. I remember part of it. I said 14, he was picked at 12. I mean, I was on the right track. A little bit off base, so what do I want to take here? Not a whole lot. We're going to go on D tackle. Per usual, probably. Nick Howell, welcome to the team. 73 overall. Number 21 in the class. Took him at 64. Only normal dev. I'm only taking defensive tackles. That's the entire rebuild. <laughs> See you guys in the next one. TP will handle it. Okay, so us losing Raekwon McMillan is actually going to be a blessing in disguise because we have perfect 3-4 personnel. Crosby, left end. Maurice Hurst, he honestly could play right end. And then uh, Little, maybe, at, at uh, right end or D-tackle. I mean, one of those things is going to happen. But uh, yeah, Harold Landry slides back. Farmer, Lucas on the inside. Bradley off the edge. So this is the team for this season. Still a pretty good looking team. No real complaints. Defensively, we're in a 3-4 now. Maurice Hurst is playing right end. Not super suited for it. He's a 78 overall. But uh, that's okay. He was a little bit higher at defensive tackle. But Little's going to play that. And then specialist wise... I might just leave Johnson in the slot. Gordon can be our slot corner. That's fine. Harold Landry, Max Crosby off the off the edge. Yeah, that's fine actually. Okay, I stopped the sim at the midseason mark here. We're five and three. A little bit worse than where we are used to being after these past couple years. However, Henry Ruggs needs a long-term deal now. Oh, Derwin James as well. Okay, this is again going to get quite expensive. We do have some money. Henry Ruggs is 18 mil a year. Are you kidding me, dude? Can I pay you less than that? I sure would like to. How about less than 17? He wants just more money overall. Okay, Harold Landry, three years. That, that's not bad. That's not a bad contract. Please just accept it. Okay. I got some of these re-signed packages. We have Zach Ertz. CPU signed Zach Ertz. Okay. I need these guys to just take less money five-year deal for derwin james are you kidding me he's 30 no i could give him i could give him three years nice well okay the team is imploding deontay harris has to go at this point he's not worth the contract that's why we extended him when we did or offered him the, offered him that big money when we did he was good enough for what he was but he's more of a special teamer trent brown at 33 we're in a tough spot. That's just where we are. Oscar Bradley needs to come back too. Oh, no, 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 no. Henry Ruggs still wants more money. I don't know how we're going to do this. Oscar Bradley is someone that is, he's also super expensive. We just can't afford all these guys. We're in a frustrating spot, to say the least. Oscar Bradley returns, though. The thing is, though... Henry Ruggs is worth signing as a 99 overall receiver. I really believe that. But is he worth this amount of money? He still wants more. Uh, I, I don't think we can do it. I don't. I can't give Henry Ruggs 20 mil again. When we have other players to sign, I just don't think it's possible. Harold Landry is back at least. Trent Brown probably going to have to walk. Like, you just... Uh, a one-year deal is fine, but... I can maybe even give him two. So he's back. He might retire, though. Last offer. Okay, Henry Ruggs is back. He's accepted. He's gonna be a Raider for the next five years. Oh, Oscar Bradley did not accept? Okay. I didn't know that, but he is worth a lot of money. He's back. I could have sworn he re-signed. Derwin James wants a higher bonus, and still, he wants a five-year deal. He is 30. That is ridiculous. I'm going to give it to him. Whatever. Five-year deal for Derwin James. He's really good. He is going to regress. He Because he has Superstar X Factor, he regresses more slowly. Hopefully, he does not regress like into the low 80s, and I'll be satisfied with that. It's going to be playoff time. We're going to make the playoffs. We were 7-3, and three, and then we dropped to 7-4 and four as I was simulating week by week to get those players. And we missed the playoffs. At 9-7, and seven, finished third in the division. Because three teams finished 9-7. and seven. I just gotta shut up. Clearly. How do we not make the playoffs, man? Mark Lucas was pretty good. 
Josh Jacobs was pretty good. Didn't get a whole ton of touchdowns, but he had a really good year. David Johnson was good. Henry Ruggs needs to go back in the slot because I'm not I'm not going to pay all that money for Henry Ruggs to have 56 catches and four touchdowns. Not going to happen. Braxton Lucas with a really good year. Max Crosby was solid. 16 sacks from Harold Landry, though. Interceptions, three for the entire team. And they both came from linebackers. Wow. Okay. 3-4 move has some growing pains, that's for sure. No Raiders. So odd. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Lamar Jackson. No Raiders. Defense Player of the Year, Miles Garrett. Harold Landry at three. D- Offensive Rookie of the Year, Tavon Andrews. Defense Rookie of the Year, Deion Tate. All right, got to let Deontay Harris walk. We're barely skating by. Again, we're not really going to have any money to sign anybody in free agency, so we have to make the most out of our draft picks. I'm speaking really quickly because I'm excited. Ooh, Bradley's up to superstar dev. There we go. We need another defensive lineman, though, for sure. Defensive end. Uh, That could be Taylor. That could be Taylor. We might just move back to a 4-3, man. I just need a linebacker. Damn. Spencer Jackson. 77 overall corner. Goes one pick before us. But what do I want to take? I haven't even looked at a... Carlos Carter looks pretty good. I haven't even looked at our quarterback's development traits yet. We are going to end up probably moving one of those guys. Aiden Quincy looks okay. Nothing special. Carlos Carter is probably going to be my pick here. Ibrahim Stovall looks okay. Jerry Williams looks pretty good as well. All right, Carlos Carter it is out of Tennessee. 78 overall, number two in the class. Took him at 16. 87 power moves coming out of the draft. Are you kidding me? 84 speed. Blockshed's a little low, but he is immediately our starting right end. Tell me a good player is still available here in the middle of the second. Preferably someone from my draft board. Uh, Not the player I wanted. Ooh, Roy Mays has superstar. That's interesting. We have options now. Uh, Chapman's going to be on his way out. We could use a good receiver. We need a starting center. And then defensively, Cesar Ruiz could move over, by the way. That's not really too much of a problem. We could move back to a 4-3. We do have, like, three defensive ends, though. I want Bradley going after the QB. I don't know why he's a 76 overall primary edge rusher. He has 95 finesse moves. 90 speed. Max Crosby is going to be a rush D tackle, probably. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Now nah, we got to move back to a 4 3. We were a lot more successful in there, anyways. So I'm paying my receivers so much money. Paying them a lot. Okay, uh, really interesting trade here. I'm trading backup QB Jesse Chapman, D tackle B Little, and a second round pick in 2027 this year. For a first and a second next year, and the left guard, 75 overall, Stanton. We are probably going to move Cesar Ruiz to center. This will be the team for one of the final seasons here before we simulate a pretty good chunk and see how the CPU handles the team. And we'll jump back in. I do want to see like who wins the Super Bowl and all that, and if this team does. But uh, Madden like stat tracking is so bad that that's really not even possible. But this is the team right now. It looks so good. Like, even Carter is a 68 overall rush defensive tackle. 6'3", 270 with 87 power moves, 84 speed up the middle. Really, really good. We got Bradley and Harold Landry on the edge. Farmer, Lucas, sub-linebacker. Henry Ruggs in the slot. This team should be dominant. That's what it comes down to. This team should be so good. So we will simulate straight to the playoffs. And then I think after this season, the CPU is going to take over for a little bit. And it's going to be interesting to see what players we lose. It's going to be sad. First round bye, even after a week 17 loss. 13-3. and three. Yeah, I mean, second best offense. Mark Lucas finally came into his own with 4,300 yards. 40 touchdowns, only 9 picks. Rushing, Josh Jacobs was so good. Almost 1,300 yards, 17 touchdowns, average five and a half per carry. Henry Ruggs was awesome, over 100 catches, 1,400 yards and 13 touchdowns. Owen Navarre, our starting tight end, had 90 catches, 900 yards, and 10 touchdowns. Stupid good numbers. 
This was just a, a very, very good offense, and our defense was sick as well. Look at all these sacks, man. 11 and a half for Bradley, 7 for Calvin Farmer. 14 tackles for loss for Carlos Carter, also had three and a half sacks. Uh, Harold Landry had seven and a half interceptions, three for Damian Hayden, led the way. A lot of guys had two. Yeah, look at all those sacks. That's a, a phrase you probably don't want to hear at the Y, but pretty good in Madden. Lucas at four for MVP. Love that. AFC Offense Player of the Year, Patrick Mahomes. Mark Lucas at four. Defense Player of the Year, Tremaine Edmonds. Oscar Bradley at eight. Offense Rookie of the Year, Greg Perkins. Defense Rookie of the Year, Earl McKinley. We get Carlos Carter at three. He's a 77 overall as a rookie. And he moved over to D-tackle. That is awesome. Where are we going to be here? You got the Bengals here in the divisional. To get to the AFC Championship, we beat them. 38-28. And now the Browns here in the championship to advance to the Super Bowl. Can we beat them? No. We didn't. It's going to be off-season time. Very sad. Josh Jacobs is finally up to Superstar X-Factor. It's amazing he didn't get there before. He won running back of the year, and he went up. Yeah, really, really good player. That's going to help him regress a little bit uh, more slowly, as DeAndre Swift is a casual 90. Mays is a backup QB at 81 overall. Superstar dev. Navarre is quite good. He's up to star development. Love that. And then defensively, what can you show me here? Lucas is up to Superstar X-Factor. Yeah, this team is just super, super talented. I'm going to turn on CPU, like, auto resign and team management and then pick things up in 2037. This team is going to be so different. All right, should be super fun to see where we are in 10 years. See you guys in 2037. So I figured we'd jump in real quick here and just see where the team is. As we are down to an 82 overall. Glad to see the CPU has managed things. Inept. Let's see where the team is. I am so scared to see who our quarterback is. It is still Lucas. However, we did unfortunately lose our stud backup. Roy something. Josh Jacobs is down to an 87, but he is 34 years old. Still pretty good. No more DeAndre Swift. Lost a lot of the big pieces on our offensive line. Cesar Ruiz is down to an 84. He is 33 years old. Of course, no more Colton Miller. Navarre is down to an 81. We lost Henry Ruggs. No. Defensively, we still have Lucas. Bradley is up to a 90 overall. And Superstar X Factor. Gotta love that. We lost a lot of big pieces on our entire defense. We only have Lucas and Bradley still remaining. And Carter, actually. Excuse me. Carter's still here. He's an 85 overall. He's really, really good. 97 power moves. Yeah, okay. He's a stud. Weston is a new addition. Antoine Weston out of Ohio State. Not too bad in there. And then we have our middle linebacker is Wendell Ellison at a UNLV. Star Dev. You know, he's not too bad, actually. But cornerback is super weak. Hayden's our best bet there. I wonder what happened to Henry Ruggs and, like, some of these other guys, Harold Landry. Now, we can see NFL records here for individual players. However, as Russell Wilson is on football team, oh my goodness. Patrick Mahomes is inside the top, what is this, like 15 all time? It would make sense for it to be 10, but I don't think it is. That's five. Is top 11? Is that how many rows there are? Why? What? No, it is 10. Just seemed like a lot. Now, I wish we could see... Um, I wish we could see Super Bowl winners by year. I don't think you can do that, though, because Madden kind of sucks. Now, we can see Legacy Leaderboard to see how many Super Bowls we've won, which is only one, and it's the one that we saw. So, in simulation, didn't win any more Super Bowls. Two AFC Championships, so you'll take that. But we need another Super Bowl before this thing's over. We're going to jump back into the sim machine. See you in five years. All right, canceling the sim here in week 11 of 2037. We're four and five. So we are actually going to have to do a little bit of a rebuild here. Only an 81 overall. I'm sure that's going to change here uh, momentarily as we do uh, two more seasons. We don't even have a picture of our left guard. No idea what he looks like. Sellers here. Decent 84 overall center. Oh, we got smoking Jay Cutler at tight end. Julian, whatever. He's Jay Cutler now. We don't have a quarterback. 
We don't really have much at receiver. 85 overall, I see that, but it's nothing special. And then defensively, we have Dwayne Haskins at right outside linebacker. That's Gerard Mayo. Jamal, okay. Do you remember Gerard Mayo? He was good. Peterson might be our best uh, guy to work with here. 27 years old, 85 overall. He's decent. Don't coverage isn't that high, but look at our defensive line. Carter is up to superstar development. He is 32, though, but he's like the last remaining piece of what we had before. Very sad. And here's Peterson, Jalen Peterson, 25 years old, superstar development, only an 81 overall. His block shed is so low. That's interesting. He's 310 pounds. Not really much of a 4-3 defensive end. He's someone I probably would want to move to the inside. But it's a decent team. It's a decent team. Not going to be a playoff team, probably. As we will simulate to the playoffs. And jump back in. Starting over. Still the GM. We'll figure it out. Yeah, not a playoff team. But we should have a lot of money in free agency. So time to build through that method. So in free agency, we did bring in a new corner in uh, Jay Hawkins. At this point in the rebuild, it's 2037. None of the players are real, so I don't really know uh, who they are. He is a 72 overall, 30 years old. Really good signing there. CPU was responsible for that. How much money do we have? 108 mil. Next year's free agency is going to be wild. Is there anyone worth bringing in here? They're just too old. Ronnie Harrison. Doesn't look like Ronnie Harrison, but okay. Uh, Alex Simpson might be worth bringing in. 25 years old. Good offensive lineman. Not terribly expensive. I will be down to give him a contract. 109 total points. Should be good enough to sign him. Anyone else that I want? Not a whole lot there. Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> 78 overall. Patrick Mahomes is in there. All right. Let's see if we can get that addition to our offensive line, and we do. Fifth year options I'm not worried about, and uh, we'll do the 2038 NFL draft. A Rice corner went in the first round, and he's gonna stay in the same city as Rice is located in Houston, and the Texans took him, so pretty cool. Let's go ahead and think about what we might need. So our offensive line, pretty good overall, not amazing. Alex Simpson can move over and play left guard, that's fine. It's a big upgrade. And then we potentially need a QB. We do have a 75, 76 overall QB with star development. So that's not terrible. It's not great. 75 with morale. Running backs, weird. Receivers, not great. These are all positions we can need. And then defensively, Mayo. Did he have superstar? I'm not sure that he did. He has it now. Yeah, he just got it. Hackett's in there. We need cornerback really badly. I think that's our biggest need. Middle linebacker wouldn't be the worst idea either. Jadarius McKee. Sus. Anyway, he's 6'2", 260, ran 4'4", 9. It's ridiculous. Top skills are crazy. That's going to be the pick. Daryl Rudd also looks super good. Makes it a tough decision for sure. You know what? I just don't think we need a defensive tackle that badly i thought about daryl rudd i was close i wanted to pull the trigger and then trade up but i think we just have to go with the defensive end yeah it's gotta happen jadarius mckee it is he looks stupid good and he is number one player in the draft only a 77 overall though you'd like that to be a couple overall points higher only normal development he's very good 88 speed coming off the edge i think jaron mclaughlin here 71 overall, normal development. Doesn't really know how to cover. McLaughlin? I guess you could pronounce that a couple different ways. Probably McLaughlin, if it is uh, in real life. There's no Sarah McLaughlin? Mc McLaughlin? Why? Why am I struggling to say that name? See, you know, the Arms of the Angels, SPCA commercials. Jamal Cersei's my pick here, receiver. Also 71 overall, also normal development. Also can't run routes. Right, I have officially maxed out every single coach package. So, that's a thing. The team, like, casually sucks. So this season, I don't think is going to be too good. But we are building on the future. A lot of holes. Next year, we're going to be great. We're in 2038. 
So two more years remaining to turn it around. I'll simulate to the playoffs. We made the playoffs at 10 and 6. Won the division, like, pretty easily. Chris Gilmore looks like he's a monster. Had a really, really nice season. Rushing Ramon Wiggins was interesting. I don't want to say he was that good, but he was okay. Receiving Julian Cutler, good year. I mean, Jay Cutler. Tevin Rivers, pretty good year. Nine touchdowns for both Anthony Hunt and Kyle Casey. The ball distribution seems to be pretty great. And then defensively, Deontay Bankston had the most tackles on the team, also two sacks. But Carlos Carter had 15 up the gut, nine for Lorenzo Allen. Our defensive tackles are making a habit of getting after the quarterback. Decent number of interceptions in there as well. Our offense was third in the NFL as Brennan Skaggs wins MVP. I remember him in the draft. He actually would be pretty old at this point. He is not young. Mahomes in there with the Bills at 79 overall. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Brandon Skaggs. Chris Gilmore at three. Defensive Player of the Year is Brandon Good. Carlos Carter at seven. Offensive Rookie of the Year is KJ Silver. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Jeremy McLaughlin. Okay. Can we beat the Steelers in the wild card? They got the MVP at QB, and we do. Now Patrick Mahomes and the Bills in the divisional, and they beat us by three. It's offseason time. Is there anyone worth re-signing here? Corey Sellers is 29. Carlos Carter is a beast, but is 34. Down to 81 power moves. Oh my goodness, he regressed so heavily. That's wild. Power moves went down by six. Oh. Lorenzo Allen will bring back. Greg Hackett, probably not. Chris Gilmore's 34 now. I don't think we're going to touch him either. Probably just Lorenzo Allen then. And he is back. I think the rest just don't really make sense. I'd rather have the money. 127 mil. Let's go crazy in free agency. The players just aren't here. They just aren't. I mean, we're signing Marcus Gabriel almost for sure. But, I mean, he's the only player above an 84 overall. And I gave him 19 mil a year, and he still said no. Not good. I'm just so shocked that, uh, like, free agency is as bad as it is. No one is there. It really is amazing how old and how bad our team is. It's amazing that they found that balance of um, not being good and also being expensive and no potential. All right, trading Moses and Turk, 78 overall. That's not, there are two numbers on the screen. I chose neither of them. 79 overall left tackle, 77 overall strong safety for number 17 in the draft. And we will simulate to that draft. Browns are back to picking at number one. I see not much has changed in the year 2039. I don't know how I'm supposed to move up. I need more first round picks because these players just kind of suck. Ramon Wiggins maybe can help me get one. Kyle Casey, I'd love to trade him. All right, Wiggins and Casey are headed to the Giants as we get number five in the draft. Still would like to trade a little bit more, but you know, we're running out of trade value. Damn, great pick by the Vikings there. 68 overall guard in the first round. Gotta love that. But we have a lot of nice candidates to take here. Hal Fowler. I mean, I don't really think we can go wrong at QB. Just who looks a little bit better uh, is Aiden Candidate out of the U. He looks like a stud. I'm gonna take him. Why not? Let's not overthink it. Number one in the draft. Star better development. Like that. 78 overall. He's a beast. Great accuracy. Pretty good arm on him as well at 91. 82 speed. He is a monster. We'll go with the receiver here in Romeo Bear at NC State. Welcome to Las Vegas. 76 overall, number five in the class. Of course, took him at 17. Normal dev, not that good, but uh, his abilities are pretty good. 95 agility, 96 change of direction. I wonder what his overall would be at running back. Who's the pick here? Robert Allen. Robert, why does it sound familiar? Or Devin Forbes. Maybe we could even take both of them. Spencer Olsen, season two. Devin Forbes is a better player. We're going to take him. 77 overall, ranked number three in the draft. Took him at 27. Only normal development. Freaking this glitch. 84 speed, 86 power moves. Block shed, wish that was higher. A lot of these defensive ends just don't have that ability in the draft. It's very odd.
Boom, second and a fourth round pick in 2039, which is this year, for Tim Buchanan, a 95 overall center. And I might not even be done because our offensive line, say offensive line oddly, I think I may have, uh, is decent, but not great. And we might be able to trade one of these guys, probably keep Damon Callaway. Might be able to trade one of these guys for a really, really good offensive lineman. Probably gonna be Tyler Farmer, if I had to guess. Trading Farmer and a third round pick for, we're gonna call him Tim Wakefield, the knuckleballer, baseball reference here for you guys. I'm gonna simulate to the end of the draft. He's probably gonna play left guard or right guard for me anyway. So, gotta rearrange some things, but we're actually starting to look okay after a pretty good draft. Wait a second. Do we have two corners named Jay McLaughlin? This is crazier than Lester Hayes and Mike Haynes when they played corner for the Raiders. This is literally not only the same last name when that wasn't even, it's the same first initial. <laughs> Dude, I'm like, do we only have one corner on the team? No, they just have the same freaking first initial and last name, and it's an uncommon last name to see in the game. I don't know that I've ever seen it before. 2039 is an interesting year. Man, free agency is bad. Tavares looks more like a Tim. All right. We're going to simulate to the midseason mark and check back in. All right, let's see what our quarterback's development is. Please tell me Superstar X Factor. Yep. <laughs> Drafted two Superstar X Factor quarterbacks. We're really two for two on that. I mean, that that's fantastic. We definitely made the right decision. Even if the other QB has Superstar X Factor as well, which I suppose is possible, we definitely made the right decision. He is a monster. Offensive line's quite good. Receiving core could be better, but it's not bad. And then defensively, our defense is all over the place. I don't really even know what to think about it. We have another off season, so we're just gonna have to be great. Four and three right now. Could still be a playoff team. Ooh, a lot of free agents. Jalen Patterson needs to come back. A lot of these guys do actually. Thankfully, we have the money to make it happen. We have 174 mil in cap room. Good Lord. All right, so Damon Calloway wants more money. Apart from that, we got Julian Cutler back. We got Toby Wakefield, Jalen Patterson back, Tim Buchanan back, Jamal Mayo wants more money. He is 29. He's going to regress a little bit, but I think he's worth having. Alton Bishop, I should probably resign as well. We have the money, so why not? Ooh, another playoff berth for us. Nine and seven, finished third in the AFC West. I do want to check out records. I want to see if Henry Ruggs is like, near all-time. I know he's not on this team anymore, but I want to see where he is in terms of like all-time receiving yards. If he even cracks the top 10, doesn't look like he does. That's a lot of yards to ask for. So he probably never even got close, unfortunately for him. There are some interesting players on this list though. Weatherspoon and Gary for the Saints and Dolphins are players I'm unfamiliar with, which means they are more than likely generated players, which is interesting. Odell is in there. Mark Andrews is in there. Oh man, C. Huffman for the Rams. Who is that? Miles Garrett is the all-time sack leader by a mile. Oh my goodness. Brown's playbook. Is Josh Jacobs in here? Oh, he is. Josh Jacobs is in the top six all-time for rushing touchdowns. Saquon, Nick Chubb in there. Zeke. And... Oh my goodness, Ezekiel Elliott is the all-time leading rusher. He eclipsed 20,000. Josh Jacobs in there, inside the top six again. Mahomes is number one, again, by a mile, 747. Sari for the Jets. That's Chet Sari, former Bucks QB in this game. Skaggs is in there. Justin Herbert and Baker Mayfield in there as well. Um, it would be really cool to see our quarterback we drafted, but it is not to be. Mahomes has thrown for 90,000 yards. Life's crazy. Oh yeah, also, our stats here. Candidate had like the craziest year ever. He broke the record for passing touchdowns, although barely, and then killed it for yards. 4,600 passing yards as a rookie QB is unreal. The record by, I think like 200 yards on Andrew Luck. Maurice Murphy, we have no running game. 
Tevin Rivers had 1,400 yards and 17 touchdowns. He was our entire offense. And then Gary Neal. Seemed like he played pretty well. 18 tackles for loss for Lorenzo Allen. Also had eight sacks. Love the team. Interceptions, two for Nick Anderson, two for Dave Peterson. Um, yearly awards. We should be in the running for MVP. Candidate finishes at sixth. AFC Offense Player of the Year, Wes Cleary. Candidate at three. Defense Player of the Year, Don Farrell. Offense Rookie of the Year is Aiden Candidate. Not a shock. Defense Rookie of the Year, Garrison Pruitt. We got two and three in Nick Anderson and Devin Forbes. Beat the Chiefs in the wild card to advance to the divisional. Nope, 31-10. Final offseason. Let's get it. Do I want to re-sign anybody before the final offseason? Mayo's down to an 83. I'm out. Damon Calloway, I should bring back. Tevin Rivers is a 77. No thanks. But Calloway's going to test free agency. Here's the thing. You're not. So, welcome back. 106 mil. And once again, like, the players here are not incredible. Interesting. So, as you can see, I had a pretty active free agency. We didn't get two players I wanted, which is okay. Um, not even sure how, because I, I was offering pretty big contracts on those guys. But the team has certainly improved quite a bit, led by Candidate. We got McCullough at running back now. We got another good receiver. Normal development make the, makes this team look worse than it actually is, but it's a really solid team. Candidate is up to an 85 overall, and he looks nothing like his picture. Does get an ability there. It's going to be comeback. I don't know how it goes. I think probably it's comeback is what he got there. Would love a stud running back, but our offense is pretty good. And then defensively, I just got to move some guys around. And we're going to look a lot better, but overall, pretty solid. This team might be better suited to run a 3-4. Because we just don't have a lot at linebacker. We did get another outside linebacker in Allen. He is an 84 overall. I think he's like 30, but... In the final year, that doesn't really matter too much as we are sneaking back up towards 90 overall. We're never going to hit it, but we're getting back up there close at least. 2040 NFL Draft. Eagles at number one. You'd love to see it because uh, that means they sucked, which is cool. Monte Boone, 458. I'm not interested in that at wide receiver. Could use a corner. Um, hmm. A lot of good running backs available. Might take one. It's honestly not a great draft class to end on, unfortunately. But it's been a lot of fun to rebuild this team over uh, 20 years. Of course, I'm simulating in there as well. But of course, you know, I've been sitting down for four and a half hours doing this. So it, is, uh, it has still been a grind. Henry Manning looks okay. I got some guys on my draft board. Only two available, but Patrick Parker... Do I take the running back who ran 4-5-9? Or do I take a linebacker? We need one more on the inside. He's going to be my guy. Number 9 in the class. Took him at 23. Normal development. But uh, that is going to be my starting inside linebacker. Or one of them. Of course, we've transitioned with 3-4. Can't wait to see how that works out. There's just not a ton of talent still remaining. So we're just going to let the CPU handle it as we move into the final season. Of course, remember to hit the subscribe button if you are new. It's free. You can always, you know, unsubscribe later if that's what you choose to do. But hit that subscribe button, please, so you don't miss any more uploads. I'd definitely be excited to do another one of these 20-year rebuilds. And this is the defense. I got to move, who's it, Bayless back over to middle linebacker. He's going to be only like a 72 overall there, probably. Something like that. But that's okay. Room to develop. That's what we say. All right, I'm going to make a splash trade for a running back, and then I'm good to go. It's going to be probably Forbes and Walker involved, and we're going to get a star running back to hopefully uh, shoulder the load on offense a little bit. All right, it's going to be McCullough and Walker. I actually meant to trade the defensive end and not him in that trade for something Bush. I looked at it. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. It was like not Devon maybe or like Duran. He's got Superstar X Factor. Dante wasn't really that close, other than I knew it had a D because I could read. I know what letter D is. But uh, yeah, pretty good team. We don't have a backup defensive tackle. I might as well just move like Devin Forbes over. He's 280. Yeah, I'm going to do that. This is the offense for the final season. We are led by Candidate. 
our stud second year QB now. He's a beast. Again, doesn't really look a whole lot like this picture when you actually click on him. And then Bush, Dante Bush, who also doesn't look like his picture very much at all. I don't know why that's a thing. Like, it doesn't really make sense to me. They'd not use the same, like, model. I don't get it. Um, but yeah, defense looks pretty good as well. This team should be pretty great. Check out the specialist there. And let's see what this team's capable of, man. 89 offense, 83 defense. That should get better over the course of the year. We'll simulate to the midseason mark. Maybe make a trade if we have to. So I'll stop it at like week seven. And hopefully this is a playoff and Super Bowl team. Okay, I didn't stop the simulation. We are three and four, but could still very easily take the AFC West. It, I mean, the top three teams are four and three. We're at the bottom, but we aren't out, uh, aren't out by that much. So we'll upgrade the team. And I think this could still be a playoff team. This could still be a team that runs really, really deep into the playoffs. 91 offense. Where are we ranking here? Is it our defense that's holding us back? Our offense should be really good. 13th in terms of yards. It's okay. And then defensively, our defense is good. Now, we're going to be a playoff team. All we have to do is win some big divisional games, and we should be through to the playoffs. It's like that close with these records, so I'm excited. I think we should be able to make the playoffs. It'd be kind of a sad note to end on if we do not make the playoffs. But we do make the playoffs. 11-5, and five. okay. Big turnaround, love to see that. And we will see the numbers. Six best offense. We're just going to jump in and see the actual stats. Aiden Candidate, 4,100 yards, 34 TDs, 11 picks. Good year from him. Dante Bush was quite good, although didn't get over 1,000 yards. Receiving Anthony Hunt. No 1,000-yard receivers either. But we had four with over 800. Very interesting. Defensively, Melvin Sherwood led the team in tackles with 98. Tackles for loss was 12 from Jalen Peterson, who actually did not lead the team in tackles. Nathan Allen had 13 and a half. 11 and a half for Quan Irvin, or Irwin. Six and a half for Lorenzo Allen. Interceptions, three for Jeremy McLaughlin led the team. Like to see that. And we might have Aiden Candidate as an MVP candidate. Finish it at uh, number seven. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Kerry Bradley, candidate at 7. Defensive Player of the Year, Julius Huffman. Nathan Allen at 8. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Jose Bins. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Cameron Smiley. See if we can beat the Texans in the wild card to advance to the divisional. And we do, 28-20. And the Titans went 11-5. My goodness. Candidate is up to a 91 with morale in just his second year. Look at the accuracy. Oh, he is so good. Defense looks pretty good as well. It's all about putting it all together now. Beat the Titans, please. We just beat the Titans replacement when the Texans, you know, uh, became a thing in Houston after the Oilers moved out and became the Tennessee Oilers and then the Tennessee Titans like a year later. AFC Championship time, come on. Let's go, 45-31. We crushed them and then it's the 10-6 and six Chiefs. No Patrick Mahomes now. We should be able to win this game. Please, please. Yes. 11 and 5, baby. Still better than 10 and 6. We beat the Chiefs. I don't know why I said 11 and 5. It is 2 in the morning. And I am fried with my brain after recording for five hours. But we got the Panthers in the Super Bowl. They went 12 and 4. Let's run one more time through the team. 88 overall. We had 92 offense. Was that 85 defense? Not too bad. Candidate still at a 92, 95 for Dante Bush. No development changes on offense. What about defensively? Allen's at Superstar. I think these guys mostly were at Superstar. It's tough to tell who went up and who didn't. I think McKee maybe went up to Star. But we'll see here. Super Bowl Arizona versus the 81 overall Carolina Panthers. This has got to be a win. Okay, not a bad start to the game. Up 17-0. Panthers do finally get on the board, though. 17-7. Something tells me they're about to mount a comeback. Hopefully not. 24-7 in the fourth quarter. 31-7. It is time to jump in, see if we can make a play. Oh, we're on offense. In the red zone, I assume after a big turnover. Just want to see what candidate's all about. We got, uh, what is his name? Dante whatever, too. We're going to throw it down to Stevens, reminiscent of Dolphins franchise. You guys watch that on my channel, Madden 20. Ray Stevens. It's not who that is, though. Obviously. Second and 10. 
run. Worst play in football, and it's successful. Because that's how that goes. Dante Bush has 160. Oh, he might be getting that Super Bowl MVP action, I think. This is a perfect time for play action to take a sack and uh, lose a game. Actually, just kidding. I throw a touchdown. Well, whatever. Whatever. Not there. Second down runs only. And uh, Dante Bush is stopped again. It's a good thing we're up 31-7. And it doesn't matter at this point. Let me throw a touchdown. They're not playing defense to cover slants. Touchdown. Hunt. Game over. That's certainly the dagger if we didn't have it a while ago. 22 seconds remain, and they're just checking their way all down the field. Checking down is not going to help you overcome like a 30-point deficit. Nothing will. The game's over. He's just going to hold on to the ball forever and then take a sack that <laughs> will ensure that they lose the game no matter what. Not that they weren't going to anyways. Would have had to take a lot to uh, give them any type of a chance. But yeah, that's a great play there. Great check down to lose the Super Bowl. 38-7 is your final as the Raiders once again are Super Bowl champions as a second Super Bowl is now on its way to Las Vegas. It's good stuff. Super Bowl wins always feel good, and I think that's as good a spot as any to end this video with the celebration playing in the background. If you guys made it to the end of the video, that's amazing. Uh, comment uh, apple juice. I don't do whatever. Uh, but make sure to subscribe to this channel. Check me out on Twitter, twitter.com slash YouTube. Tweeting about football all the time on there. My second channel, we got, uh, you know, all these types of things going on. IRL football cards and baseball cards, uh, openings, and GeoGuessr, figuring out where you are in the world, and then Let's Plays. A lot of different things on the second channel. Maybe you're interested. Make sure to subscribe over there as well. It's enough plugs. If you guys are interested, you can find the links in the description. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, liking, commenting, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. See me high step to the end zone. My life like a game Nintendo. Playing with the best, let them know. Get off the track, the train's coming through. Yeah. Promise you get in my way, then you best believe I'ma just run over you. Yeah, yeah. I'ma turn taking it back to the house. Defensive joke, I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.